Manitoba, the beginning of the Canadian West. Today, one of the richest mixed farming areas in the world, pioneered by men and women who succeeded because they learned the value of cooperation. Down they came from Hudson's Bay, through the northern waterways to the junction of the Assiniboine and the Red. Over the new rails of the transcontinental line, they came by the thousands. And up the course of the Red River, they paddled and trekked. The dream of each man was in the newness of the land. And in the new land, too, were the hardships that every pioneer must face. They came in search of a free and prosperous new life. They survived the struggles and frontier risks because they learned one lesson well. Each man came to know his security as part and parcel of the security of his neighbors. Each man came to know the likeness of a burden shared, the ease of a task divided. The loneliness of a frontier life fell away with the growth of this spirit of cooperation. They learned the lesson well, and their sons and daughters after them. And it became a part of the culture of these people, just as much in the threshing bees at harvest time, as in the popularity of the loading platform over the line elevators. For the loading platform became the symbol of the farmer's security, growing out of their application of the old lesson. Here in Manitoba, during the first quarter of the new century, this simple lesson grew up. The forces which compelled the pioneers to work together now changed into something harder to understand. Time and the weather were reason enough for the threshing bee. It was the play of economic forces that made these men come together in the fields, that sat these people down together in their kitchens. They talked out the principles of the Rochdale pioneers, control by the people, and operation at cost. But there was more than talk. From the beginning, men like Partridge of St. Luther worked for a farmer's grain marketing organization. And each year, as the harvests covered the good lands of the province, the old and good lesson these men had taken from their fathers spread and grew into a constitution a set of rules and regulations to guarantee security in good times and bad. In 1906, the Grain Growers Grain Company was formed. It was a company of farmers united to defend the interests of the grain growers in the handling and marketing of their product. Wherever men found common interest in such matters, the company grew. In the early 1920s, another great producer marketing organization sprang up. Wherever the cooperative spirit grew, new elevators were built. Pools, they called them, for they were owned by the farmers together, and they contained the wealth of all their owners. They were clean and modern, a part of a 20th century formula grown out of a 19th century philosophy. From town to town, the wooden symbol of the pool spread across the prairies. But the advance of the new cooperative idea was interrupted. When the bottom fell out of world economy, during that depression, the wheat bushel suffered. In 28, a dollar 46. In 29, a dollar 25. In 30, a dollar 25. 
In 31, 64 cents. In 32, 60 cents. In 33, 54 cents and as low as 25 cents. All other farm prices dropped as well. Prices of oats, rye, barley, eggs, butter, cream, milk, cheese, hogs, cattle, apples, poultry, everything the farmer grew and sold. All through these troubled years, the farmers remained loyal to their pools. There was something of security there, in the sealing of the loaded cars, in the shunting freights. There was some ray of hope in the steady flow of cars through the greatest marshalling yards in the world. in the steady flow of Manitoba's growing harvests through the greatest grain terminals in the world. The confidence of the farmers was unbreakable, for this vast enterprise was theirs, built by them, controlled by them, founded upon their belief in the simple lesson of their father's fathers. In all the history of the Canadian West, no growth factor is more important than the two great farmer cooperatives, the Western Pools and the United Grain Growers. Even before the wheat pools existed, cooperation had been applied by the farmers of the Southwest to the marketing of poultry and eggs. In 1922, the Manitoba Cooperative Poultry Marketing Association was organized. Today, there are 60 egg grading stations in Manitoba handling 60 million eggs and two and a half million pounds of poultry a year. Cooperation brought higher standards, better grading facilities, more all-around modern handling, and increased returns to the farmer producer. The dairy co-op was among the first to emerge at the beginning of the movement. Almost all the farmers in Manitoba depend for a part of their income on dairy products. Co-op creameries and cheese factories grew up across the country alongside the pool elevators. The oldest of all the cooperatives in Manitoba is the North Star Cooperative Creamery Association at Arborg. Today, the Manitoba Cooperative Dairies have combined with the poultry pool to form a single co-op association with the double function of producing and marketing poultry and dairy products. There are now seven large cooperative creameries in Central Points, with the largest at Brandon. In 1927, farmers in Manitoba organized the Manitoba Cooperative Livestock Producers Limited. At that time, the organization was made up of 40 rural shipping associations, with a total membership of 7,000 farmers. Today, there is a membership of about 35,000, 
working in conjunction with livestock cooperatives in Saskatchewan and Alberta. Together, they maintain and control Canadian Livestock Cooperative Western Limited, which acts as a selling agency for a large percentage of the stock marketed in the three prairie provinces. When the Manitoba Cooperative Honey Producers Association was organized, the industry took on new importance. The only plant of its kind in the province is owned by the co-op. Here the honey is pasteurized and packaged under modern conditions which assures uniform high quality. It was in 1914 that the farmers in the small town of Moline first organized a cooperative to provide themselves with consumer goods. This was a departure on a small scale, but it was a significant start. Co-ops had dealt only with production and marketing. Moline pioneered a new field. Today, there are over 140 consumer cooperatives in Manitoba. They supply their members with groceries, dry goods, hardware, petroleum products, and other articles. Men and women with no previous business experience came together to apply the old lesson of mutual aid. Today, their business adds up to $7 million a year in service to over 32,000 Manitoba families. The modern tank wagon delivery service provided by many co-ops today is a large jump ahead of the early cooperative days when the farmers took their oil drums to the railway sidings. Just as agriculture itself has emerged into a highly mechanized industry. The cooperative way tends to become the most modern way, using the latest methods and the latest equipment. With the growth of the consumer cooperative movement in Manitoba, it became clear that a further step should be taken to increase the overall gains and coordinate the efforts of each single association. Consumer cooperatives served their own memberships. They made their purchases from established wholesalers. Because they existed independently, there was overlapping, cross-purpose effort. In 1927, a majority of the 30 consumer co-ops operating in the province got together to form the Manitoba Cooperative Wholesale Limited. They had two main objectives, bulk purchases for greater savings, extended organization for greater strength. The members have complete democratic control. Through their wholesale, for example, they can obtain all their petroleum products, including lubricating oils and greases processed in their own plant. The wholesale cooperative even covers the production of stock and poultry feeds and concentrates in their own modern factory. It was natural that the success of cooperation among the farmers should be reflected in the cities of Manitoba. In Winnipeg, consumer cooperatives have thrived in recent years. The People's Cooperative owns a large creamery serving thousands on its 50 milk routes with a million dollar turnover. Since the early 30s, coal and wood have been handled by the Red River Cooperative. 
Red River serves 2,000 members in Winnipeg. It has set up a hardware department and proposes to go into other consumer goods. Cooperation among the French-speaking Canadians of Manitoba has brought outstanding success. It was in St. Malo that the credit union idea, the Caisse Populaire, first took hold in the province. The Depression had brought hardships and the need for credit denied by other organizations. With well over a hundred credit unions now existing in the province, collective savings are loaned on the basis of character and need. Some of the credit unions have grown to the point where they can provide complete banking facilities. They command the full confidence of their members. Many a farm has been saved and many a fine home built from credit union loans. Today, the economic role of the cooperative is complete with the extension of activity into the field of manufacturing and processing. Canadian Cooperative Implements Limited now owns a large plant in Winnipeg. Various types of small farm machinery are manufactured and the organization has contracted for the international distribution of the larger machine units made by an established company. In southern Manitoba, many farmers have taken a step in the direction of specialized row crop production combined with processing. Sunflowers are being grown in quantity for their high quality edible oils. The farmers organized and constructed their own plant for extraction purposes. It is the first industry of its kind in Canada. Others in the south have turned to corn and the canning industry. Cooperative canning is one answer to the problems of the small acreage farmers who require maximum returns to make their holdings pay. In Manitoba today, the overall picture of cooperation is impressive. There are the elevators, handling and marketing grain, the stores, dealing in most consumer goods, the service stations and petroleum products, the credit unions, extending savings and credit facilities, the processing plants for specialized crops, the dairies with domestic and export output, amalgamated with the poultry marketing associations, the factories, manufacturing farm implements and parts, the Cooperative Life Insurance Organization, and the Manitoba Cooperative Livestock Producers Limited. More than 45,000 members are benefiting. All the Manitoba cooperatives are represented by the Manitoba Federation of Agriculture and Cooperation, established in June 1945. The Federation works to promote the cooperative way of life, and it gives representation to the organized Manitoba farmer before governments and other authoritative bodies. The Federation is concerned with coordination of agricultural policy, cooperative councils, film programs, study groups, literature, folk schools, farm radio forums, and youth camps. Its program is long term with an eye to the future. The Federation knows where it is going. Someday these youngsters in the camps and the summer schools will be able to take over. The Federation knows that its future depends on the thinking and doing of its young people today and tomorrow. In the MFAC youth camps and summer schools, the new generation is taking up the old lesson. 
It is in the games they play, the arts and crafts they learn. Instinctively, they understand basic principles in their team play, in the work of running their camps. In their own cooperative store, they learn the rules by doing the turn. In raising funds for a permanent camp, they run field days, concerts, films. Everybody gets into the spirit of the campaign. And with all this, and a few pretty young taggers, the camp is nearer by over $10,000, with more to come. In their study groups, young people tackle their community problems with enthusiasm. They know the part they can play in making their towns better, in making their future more secure. Discussions of the adult groups are carried over Trans-Canada networks on the Farm Radio Forum. Newspapers, public meetings, and radio are all enlisted in the work of promoting everywhere the philosophy and economics of mutual aid. Cooperation is the philosophy of the common good for which man has always striven. It is a movement which belongs to the people of every race, every color, every creed, everywhere. It is an appeal to the good that is in each, developing a desire for justice, freedom and equity, which has stirred people with a purpose to organize for action. Such were the deep underlying human emotions that motivated the pioneers in the early days of the cooperative movement and are the foundations upon which it is being built today. The cooperative philosophy is put into effect through the application of two principles, control by the people and operation at cost. People with a purpose have organized cooperatives as a means to make their communities a better place in which to live and as a step towards economic security and social justice. To help, to serve, to build of such is their stuff. Onward and upward through the ages, man has struggled for the better life. Slowly but surely he is learning that in the principle of mutual aid is to be found the means by which he can achieve his purpose. 